Hello and welcome to this second video on ethical changes. This is just dealing with specifics of Hesse's law. So Hesse's law is that the entropy change of a reaction is independent of the route taken. So if a reaction goes from reactants to products in one step, or if it goes in many steps, the entropy change of that reaction is the same. It's just the sum of the entropy changes of those reactions in that multi-step process. And in exams, you'll be asked three main types of Hesse's law questions. In all of them, you're asked to find out the entropy change of a reaction. But you're not given the entropy change of that reaction. You're given the entropy change of other reactions that you have to make a Hesse's law cycle from. The three main types of data that you can be given are entropy changes of combustion, entropy changes of formation, or just some other data that somehow you need to link together to get from reactants to products without going straight there. The majority of the questions that come up are either combustion data or formation data, but occasionally you get one and they call that unfamiliar data. Those are the really hard questions, and for those you really need to understand what you're doing in the process in order to work out what you need to do and in what order you need to put those reactions. Okay, so let's assume this is the entropy change we're trying to work out, the entropy change of that reaction. This is the hydration ethene to make ethanol. There's a few bits of data we could be given. We could be given the entropy change of formation of each of these three chemicals. Or we could be given the entropy change of combustion of the two organic chemicals. And I'm going to do the combustion one. So they'll give you information, they'll give you data. And the data they need to give you for combustion is the combustion of ethene and the combustion of ethanol. Okay, so these data are for the entropy change of combustion of ethene, it's minus 1411. And for the entropy change of combustion of ethanol, minus 1371 kilojoules per mole. What we need to do now is combine these data with this equation to work out this unknown quantity for the entropy change of reaction of this reaction, the hydration reaction. And the way you do that is to burn everything on the left-hand side and to burn everything on the right-hand side and put in these data to show what those entropy changes would be. Now hopefully it's obvious if we burn this side and this side, we get the same product because the atoms on this side have to be the same as the atoms on that side. And if we completely combust the same atoms, then we have to get the same product. And those products are 2CO2 and 3H2O. What I need to put now are the numbers which correspond to these changes on the arrows so that I can use them more easily. So this is the entropy change of combustion of ethene, so I'll put in minus 1411. And this arrow represents the entropy change of combustion of ethanol, so I'm going to put in this number. Now remember the answer if we want to know what this change is. And Hesse's law says it doesn't matter which way we go, that change is always the same. So if I go from here to there, then the entropy change will be the same as if I just went straight there. Now the trick is, if you go with the arrow, then the entropy change stays the same. If you're going in the opposite direction of the arrow, then you get the opposite entropy change. So in this case, minus 1411 plus 1371 will give me my answer of minus 40. And minus 40 is the entropy change of that reaction. Hydration of ethene to make ethanol. So in Hesse's law calculations with combustion data, you just combust both sides, you write down all the numbers corresponding to the substances that you've burnt on this side, all the numbers which correspond to the chemicals you're burning on this side, and then do these all as minus as you've written them down, and all of these as positives, and then that's equals. Doing entropy changes with formation is actually quite similar, so we'll do one of those now. In all of these, there's one equation that you don't know the entropy change of and you're trying to calculate. In this case, it's the addition of hydrochloric acid to propene to make chloropropane. So same as before, we're going to need some data. And this time I'm going to do it with formation data. I need to know the entropy change of formation of propene, the entropy change of formation of hydrochloride, and the entropy change of formation of 2-chloropropane. And those are plus 20 for propene, minus 92 for hydrochloride, and minus 116 for 2 chloropropane. And again, we need to combine those data with this equation. So we need to form everything on the left-hand side from the same atoms as we form the stuff on the right-hand side. Remember, formation reactions make one mole of a compound from its elements under standard conditions with everything in its standard states. Okay, so both of these are made from three carbon atoms 
seven hydrogen atoms and a chlorine atom. Those as elements in their standard states are three carbons, a solid in graphite. Seven over two hydrogen molecules gives you seven atoms of hydrogen and half a chlorine molecule. Those would be the gases in their standard states. So, same as the last one, we need to fill in these arrows with the information which is shown by them. So, on this arrow on the left, we're making propene and we're making hydrogen chloride from the elements. And we have the information, the data we need is plus 20 for propene and minus 92 for hydrogen chloride. And on the right hand side, we're just forming two chloride propanes, and that's minus 116. And in the same way as we did in the last one again, if you're going with the arrow, remember if it's this way, you still use minus 116. If you're going in the opposite direction of the arrow, then you use the opposite sign. And in the same way as last one, we go down and then up to get to the opposite side. So we're going to do minus 20, plus 92, minus 116, to get to the answer of minus 44. And so you can see the steps for the formation and combustion are quite similar. With combustion, the arrows go down to the products of a combustion reaction. And in a formation reaction, the arrows go up. That's just because combustion of a compound creates products, and so the arrows go in the same direction as they would if you were burning these chemicals. And in formation, they are making the chemicals, and so forming up. Now the last type is with unfamiliar data. So it's not combustion or formation data, it's other reactions. Some of those reactions could be formation or combustion reactions, but they could be other reactions which aren't either formation or combustion. And what we need to do is very similar to this. You need to find a way of getting from the reactants to the products in a different way. So in these cases, we go down to the elements and up to the product. And in the combustion, we went down to the combustion products and then back up to the product of the reaction. Now with unfamiliar data, often there's more steps and I'll show you one of those now. Okay, so for this reaction, which is nitrogen dioxide reacting with water to make nitric acid and nitrogen monoxide, what we need to do is combine these three equations with this equation to somehow get from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And the way I'd suggest doing that is by finding something which only appears once in these equations and then linking it to this main equation. It's almost like you're playing a game of mix and match, trying to get from one side to the other. So the first one I'll start off with is the middle one, because it makes nitric acid, and I've got to make nitric acid. And so I take that middle equation, halve it, because I'm making two instead of four, and then place it here. Okay, so you can see here we've got the nitric acid being made by nitrogen, five over two oxygen, and water. So that's these all halved, making half of that. And then finally, because the nitrogen monoxide doesn't take place in that reaction, it doesn't change. The enthalpy change of this reaction would be half of the enthalpy change of that reaction because it's got half of the reactants making half of the product. So that's minus 128 kilojoules per mole. So now the problem is we've got to get from here to here. Now in this, nitrogen dioxide only appears once. Here I'm getting rid of nitrogen dioxide. So the reaction I'm going to use is the top reaction making nitrogen dioxide on this side. This one's making two nitrogen dioxide, whereas I have three. So I'm going to time that reaction by one and a half. So three nitrogen monoxides react with one and a half oxygens to make three nitrogen dioxide. And the same as the nitrogen monoxide on this side doesn't take place in that reaction, the water doesn't take place in this reaction. So I've used two of these equations, and I've got one left. I've got this, which is almost a complete cycle, but not quite. Hopefully, the difference between this side and this side will also be the difference in that reaction. So I'm just looking for the difference. So here there's water on both of them, so that doesn't change. On this side there's three nitrogen monoxides, and on this side there's one. So my left hand side has two more nitrogen monoxides. And on this side I've got three over two oxygens, whereas here I've got five over two oxygens. So this side has one oxygen molecule more. And it's also got a nitrogen molecule more. So if you look at the actual difference, here I've got nitrogen and oxygen and two fewer nitrogen monoxides. This side I don't have an oxygen, I don't have a nitrogen, but I have two extra nitrogen monoxides. And hopefully you can see that that's this reaction. If I react this nitrogen with one of those oxygens, I make two extra nitrogen monoxides, and then the whole thing balances. 
And because it's in the same stoichiometric amounts as that reaction, I'll just put in exactly the same number as that reaction. Notice the direction of the arrow. It goes from nitrogen and oxygen to nitrogen and oxide. To get to the unknown, same as before, I start off at the reactants. I go along the arrows. If they're going in the same direction, I add them. If they're going in the opposite direction, I subtract them. So this would be minus, minus 174, minus 183, minus 128. And that gives us the answer of minus 137 kilojoules per mole, which would be this unknown. And that's how I use unfamiliar data to calculate an unknown entropy change. I treat it like a puzzle, but I know that these three, because those are the three that the example gave me, those three reactions must combine in some way to get from the left to the right. And so I find the ones which only appear once, like nitric acid and like nitrogen dioxide, and I start there. Then, once I'd used two of them, I knew the last one was going to be the way that these two link together. I just made sure that that was correct, and I worked out which way the arrow should go. Okay, so I hope that helped in your Hess's Law questions, and I hope you join me in the next one. Goodbye.